What's up guys, Mickle here, and in this video, we're gonna be going over Ripple's most recent filing in the Ripple SEC case. This filing was massive and is gonna have drastic implications for this case going forward. This is one of the biggest filings in this case we have seen in a while, and therefore I think it is very important that we pay very close attention to it because I think it's gonna give us a very good idea of where this case is going and where Ripple stands in this case thus far. Now this filing had to do directly with the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass speech and the emails that led up to it. Ripple is trying to obtain these documents from the SEC because thus far the SEC has flat out refused. In this video, we're gonna go over Ripple's responses, but more importantly, I'm gonna show you guys what all the different lawyers on Twitter are saying about this and how they believe this is gonna impact the case going forward. Guys, I also found a brand new Bill Hinman clip that you guys need to see. Bill Hinman once again is going off the cuff and is completely blowing up the SEC's case against Ripple. In this clip, he completely admits that Ripple never had fair notice, and I think this is going to be huge for Ripple's defense in their case against the SEC. Make sure you guys stick around for that. Last of all, we are going through a crazy time of insane market volatility, but those of us who understand what we are investing in and realize we are simply getting a better price on our favorite assets are going to come out out of this dip wealthier than ever. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys that Ripple and XRP fundamentals are stronger than ever and the market just simply isn't reflecting this. If you guys are new to this channel or come here all the time, please take a second to hit the like and subscribe button down below. It goes such a long way in helping to support this channel and it means so much to me. If you guys are ever looking for a good place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out the link in the description below. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. Okay, so before we get into exactly what the different lawyers are saying about Ripple's most recent filing, I wanna quickly catch you guys up on where we are right now. So essentially for about over a year now, Ripple's been trying to get the documentation that led to the Ethereum free pass speech. The SEC inevitably came to the conclusion that this was all Bill Hinman's personal opinion. They tried to 180 on that, but the court would not have it. Therefore, Ripple was entitled to the documentation that led up to the Ethereum free pass speech, and now the SEC has been trying to throw essentially every single privilege they can at these documents to try to heavily redact or prevent Ripple from getting these documents at all. Now, at first, the SEC was trying to apply a privilege called the DPP privilege, and this was ultimately denied by the court. But now they're moving forward with a different privilege claim called the attorney-client privilege and trying to go to the court and say, hey, you said these documents didn't apply to DPP. Do they apply to the attorney-client privilege in hopes the courts will say, hey, these do apply to attorney-client privilege, so you don't have to hand them over. Now, for most of the lawyers we heard from, we already knew this was a long shot for several reasons. The main reason being the SEC already claimed that these documents were all Bill Hinman's personal opinion, and the court said that this argument right there was settled. They are Bill Hinman's personal opinion. Now, the SEC realized that got them into a lot of trouble with handing over these documents. That's why they tried to 180 out of it, but from the court perspective, these are all Bill Hinman's personal opinion. So therefore, the SEC can't really claim attorney-client privilege because technically, if it was all his personal opinion, then technically, the SEC lawyers should have nothing to do with this speech. Therefore, the SEC can't come back and claim attorney-client privilege because technically, the SEC, according to the SEC's own argument, had nothing to do with the Ethereum free pass speech. It was all Hinman's personal opinion. Therefore, the SEC can't then go back and say, actually, this is protected by the SEC's attorney-client privilege because according to the SEC, this whole speech was all on Bill Hinman. It had nothing to do with the SEC. So the SEC trying to claim attorney-client privilege on these documents for a fundamental reason never really made any sense. And many of the lawyers following this case, when they first saw this filing, actually thought of it more as a delay tactic by the SEC 
or one last desperate attempt to try to get the court to change their mind. Now, I personally don't think the judges are going to change their mind, and I'm going to show you what all the different lawyers are getting out of Ripple's filing because overall it's extremely positive and one of the few times I have seen all these different lawyers following this case all on the same page. But even me, when I first opened Ripple's filing, one of the first really funny things I saw was their opening paragraph said, this is wrong for four reasons regarding to the SEC trying to claim attorney-client privilege. I thought that was pretty funny. Not just one reason, not just two, not three. This is wrong for four reasons. And we're going to go over what the lawyers are saying and why the SEC is so wrong in trying to claim this attorney-client privilege. So first, Jeremy Hogan really broke it down in a very simple and easy to understand way. He said, Solomon continues to amaze. He takes the findings that the speech was Hinman's personal opinion and shoves it down their throat pretty hard. The SEC really messed that up. How can Hinman receive legal advice from SEC lawyers for a personal opinion? Hmm, and that's what we were talking about before. It doesn't make any sense. Solomon also plays a veteran move in responding to the SEC and argues that only Hinman has the standing to even raise the attorney-client privilege and not the SEC. So saying, hey, if this was Hinman's personal opinion, he has to raise it. The SEC can't go and raise it for him. And I guess this is just how attorney-client privilege works, according to Jeremy Hogan. And Jeremy went on to say, it's good legal work to take an issue down to its basic premise. Is this even the problem? Proper party to object hence King Solomon. And I see exactly what Jeremy Hogan is saying here. Is the SEC even allowed to make this claim of attorney-client privilege for Bill Hinman? Jeremy Hogan thinks no, so how could the SEC win this attorney-client privilege? He thinks the basic idea of the SEC even trying to apply the attorney-client privilege is completely flawed, and this is a great sign for Ripple. Now, one of the things that made me even more positive about this filing out of Ripple was the fact that many other lawyers who have been following this case, like attorney Fred, seem to really agree with Jeremy Hogan here. Fred tweeted out, another excellent brief by Mr. Solomon and the associates working with him. Absolute takedown that exposes the complete contradictory positions taken thus far by the SEC. In fact, they are layered contradictions on top of contradictions. Fred then goes on to say that the too long to read is that Ripple will win this unless there's political mechanisms behind the scenes, and he said there might be, but will have to see. There is no basis for the SEC's position as Judge Nepburn already held it settled that Bill Hinman gave this speech in his personal capacity. The SEC lawyers are not his personal lawyers. SEC screwed itself with its short-sighted position to say the speech was Hinman's personal speech and not SEC guidance. It would have been so much better for the SEC to not have done this. Fourth, he says he loves the standing argument on page five that Jeremy Hogan also pointed out, he said that if the SEC is going to loan out its lawyers for Hinman's personal use, then Hinman needs to assert the privilege. It should not be the SEC asserting this attorney-client privilege. So it seems both Fred and attorney Jeremy both agree that Bill Hinman should be the one raising the attorney-client privilege, not the SEC. This is likely a huge problem for the SEC because they are the ones who are trying to claim the privilege, and it sounds like that is simply not how it works. Now, now, Fred then goes on to say that he does not believe this will actually get ruled on until around July, but says it really depends on how many more times the SEC tries to object to this. He kind of says at this point he has no idea how scummy the SEC is going to try to play this, because based on what we've seen so far, they could try to delay anything, but it seems like we should be expecting around July, even if the SEC tries to play dirty. Now, it doesn't seem like the SEC can apply any other privileges to these documents. They can just keep on asking the court to try to reconsider. We don't really think the SEC is going to try to do this, but we need to see what their plan is going forward. The judges so far have been very clear that they do not believe the other privileges apply to these documents. As long as they are just as clear with this attorney-client privilege, it is very likely the SEC will be hopeless on trying to appeal this and likely won't even try if the judges make it that clear that it will not be overturned. Overall, though, Fred says, great job, Ripple. Great job, Mr. Solomon. And I just think this is awesome because once again, we see Jeremy and Fred both agreeing that this was a great filing by Ripple, and that's what we like to see. Overall, Bill had a lot of the same points. He also went on to say that he thought this was
was a very good filing by Ripple. Thinks this would go ba back and forth a little bit. He points out that this was a very hard filing for Ripple to make without knowing what was in the documents, but also agreed that they did a very good job. So overall, great signs here. Looks like Ripple came back with another killer filing. Once again, putting the SEC on blast for their inconsistencies. It looks like if everything goes the way it should, this will get denied and we will be one step closer to Ripple getting these documents and to the SEC scrambling to settle this case before they have to expose their own corruption. Now guys, I need to cover this because this is something insane. I did not expect this to happen. I thought the SEC was going to keep Bill Hinman wrapped up, keep his mouth shut, not allow him to talk, but just recently he did an interview where he said a bunch of things that once again completely contradict the SEC's entire case. This is a mess for the SEC. I cannot believe they let Bill Hinman go out and do this, but wait until you hear what he says here. He completely defends Ripple's fair notice defense, and this is huge. This literally proves Ripple never had fair notice. You guys are not going to believe this. Listen up. These tests are so broad and they're so qualitative that they're always going to be, there will always be some uncertainty unless the regulators uh, either give some real clear guidance, which we don't see happening for some time. Usually there's a handful of people at the center of these, these XYZ project or ABC project. I'm not going to use names. There's usually a handful of entrepreneurs and technologists. In the meantime, if we're just dealing with today's law and, you know, the, the guidance that we have there, um, I, I'm not optimistic that it's going to be really clear that this will work and that won't work. People are going to need to, to weigh in with more. That in effect, the investor is hoping those people do well. So that means anticipation of profits on the efforts of others. I think it's kind of just like reasonably clear. Um, I would say very clear. So boom, isn't it crazy that the guy who went out and gave all the speeches to try to bring clarity to the market doesn't think there's any clarity in the market? And the guy who just walked in, took up the job recently, isn't even a lawyer, comes in and says it's all very clear. I think it shows how much of a you-know-what show this agency is right now. They have no idea what's going on. They completely contradict each other. They're always saying different things. And if there's one thing we know for sure, there was absolutely no clarity and I think at this point that is going to be obvious to the court I don't think there is any way Ripple doesn't win fair notice and I think the SEC is taking a huge risk taking this thing to summary judgment where they will inevitably lose the fair notice defense and last of all, I wanted to show you guys this because I couldn't really believe it. It kind of seems like almost a self-fulfilling prophecy at this point. Take a look at this, the similarities between the Tether logo and an atomic bomb. People always say that Tether is going to blow up the entire crypto market. Guys, this just seems like it's almost scripted to a certain point. But the thing I want to say is even if it does happen, even if Tether blows up the market, guys, it doesn't change XRP's utility. It's still a game-changing asset, and I saw this out of Ashley Prosper. This is on the Amazon website. It said, Swift and Accenture today published a paper on central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, and cross-border payments as part of a digital asset innovation to help the financial committee prepare for the possibility of moving payments in a new form of currency internationally, specifically talking about XRP. Guys, the big boys know about XRP. If this market goes down, they will be buying there is no doubt in my mind this is a buying opportunity if it happens i have no idea if it will but things like this these similarities almost make it seem scripted it blows my mind let's see what happens hopefully it doesn't but if it does be ready guys thank you so much for coming i hope you enjoyed this update i hope everyone has a great weekend and for now nickel out <laughs>